In this lesson, we are going to learn a new integration technique called integration by parts. This technique is useful for products. It sort of undoes the product rule in some minor sense. It doesn't work for all products, but it works for some. So first, let's learn what the formula is and where it comes from, and then we'll do a couple of the typical examples that this, prob this technique applies to. Okay, so this formula comes from the product rule. So first let's start by remembering what the product rule says. So the product rule says that f of x times g of x, if you take its derivative, is f prime of x times g plus f of x times g prime. <coughs> and for some reason, this product, this, this rule is almost always written with u's and v's and du's and dv's. So instead of f and g, I'm just going to use u and v. So I have that u times v prime is u prime v plus u v prime. <clears throat> okay, easy enough. So now I'm going to integrate both sides. So the antiderivative of the derivative of u v prime equals the antiderivative of u prime v plus u v prime. <clears throat> and the antiderivative of the derivative of u v prime is just u v, because you differentiate then integrate, which takes you back in a circle. And then on the other side, we can break this up into two integrals u prime v plus the integral of u v prime. And we're just going to make an arbitrary choice and we're going to solve for one of those integrals. And that one integral is, is this. <clears throat> I'm just going to get it by itself. So the integral of u v prime is u v minus integral of v u prime. And then just changing the v prime to dv and the u prime to du, you get the integral of u dv equals uv minus integral v du. <clears throat> and that is the integration by parts formula. And this choice where you picked this thing to solve for really is totally arbitrary. I could have just as easily solved for this thing. And I always have to look it up and check what the book has done just so I'm consistent. But this is what that formula in the book says. And it is not totally obvious why this is helpful or useful, but what this does is it gives you a way to transform this integral into a combination with a different integral. And that different integral that you get will be something that usually you can actually integrate, whereas the thing you began with something you cannot. So, and like I said, it applies to products. So we'll do some examples, but the basic idea is that you pick <clears throat> some part of the original problem to be u, and you pick some part of the original problem to be dv. And then you use that to translate this using this formula into another integral that hopefully you can solve. And there are some problems this applies to really well, and one hard thing about integration is that you have to recognize when that happens. And one hint is that you see a product. Okay, so here we have x squared times e to the 5x. And just because I don't have a paper in front of me, I'm going to write that formula down. So the integral of u dv equals uv minus integral v du. <coughs> okay, so you have to pick something in your original integral to be u and your original integral to be dv. And kind of like substitution, I'm going to like put my work on the left, pick a part to be u, pick a part to be dv. Now I'm going to abbreviate this IBP so that uh, you know what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm going to call this IBP number one because we're going to do this twice actually. So usually when you pick u, you pick u to be something that goes away when you take its derivative repeatedly. So here I'm going to pick the u to be x squared, that part of my integrand, and dv is the rest of the stuff e to the 5x <clears throat> dx. And then to apply this formula, this will be equal to uv minus integral v du. You've got to figure out what v is and figure out what du is. So du is the derivative of u. du is 2x dx. 
and v is the antiderivative of e to the 5x, 1 fifth e to the 5x. <clears throat> and now what that becomes is uv, so x squared times a fifth e to the 5x minus integral v du, so 1 fifth e to the 5x times 2x dx, and let's just make that more pretty. So 1 fifth x squared e to the 5x minus, take out the constants, 2 fifths integral x e to the 5x <coughs> dx. And notice that in that iteration, the original integral had x squared, see? This one now only has x. So you see you kind of made it better. And I say kind of because, well, you still don't know how to integrate x times e to the 5x. But what you can do is you can iterate this technique and apply it again. So here is the second round. Sometimes that first one results in something that's super easy to integrate, and we'll see examples like that as well. But sometimes you do this twice or three times. And so again, I'm going to pick u to be the thing that goes away, pick u to be x, pick dv to be e to the 5x dx again. <clears throat> du is now just 1 dx, and v is once again 1 fifth e to the 5x. <clears throat> now be a teensy bit careful here, x squared e to the 5x minus 2 fifths. You expand this integral out with that IDP formula. So uv x times a fifth e to the 5x, and then minus integral v du. 1 fifth e to the 5x dx. And what I've done wrong here is that because this expanded into this, these two pieces, I have to put it in parentheses, plus c. <clears throat> I'm going to require that on all homework, you distribute through parentheses. You don't leave parentheses inside of parentheses. So let's distribute that negative 2 fifths. So 1 fifth x squared e to the 5x minus 2 20 fifths x e to the 5x, and then plus 2 25ths integral e to the 5x dx. Oh, and I don't, don't need the plus c quite yet, so I'm going to take that away, actually. You can put that in at the very end. Okay, now what you have is just the integral of e to the 5x, and that's something you can totally do. You just did it like twice already. So your final answer is 1 fifth x squared e to the 5x minus 2 twenty fifths x e to the 5x plus 2 over, well that'll be another 1 fifth there, so 1 twenty fifth e to the 5x. And now don't forget that plus c because it was a general antiderivative. And you can check your work, like if you take the derivative of this function and you do it properly, you will get back x squared e to the 5x. If you don't, it's probably because you made an error in somewhere in your product rules. But that is the antiderivative of x squared e to the 5x. And the only way to do that problem is to use integration by parts and twice. You can probably also guess that if I felt really, really evil and I made this power like x cubed, you'd have to iterate this process three times. If it was x to the fourth, it'd be four times. And I probably won't do that to you because it's just so easy to make mistakes and things get really gross. But those are theoretically possibilities. And there is a sort of a tabular method that does this. Other books explain that. You can't use that on your homework because I want to see that you understand the process, not just a formula to get the right answer. So you have to show your work and do so neatly. Okay. And in the previous example, I said that you usually pick the u to be the thing that goes away, or that that's derivative goes with you differentiate repeatedly, but here, you kind of have no choice. So integral u dv equals uv minus integral v du. So this is equal to something. Okay, <clears throat> so here you can't do this. You can't pick dv to be ln y dy because you don't know how to find the antiderivative of that. You only know how to find the derivative of that. So this option is a no-go. So no-go, can't do that. You have to let 
u be natural log y. <coughs> and you have to let dv be y cubed dy. There's just no other choice. The derivative of ln of y is 1 over y dy. And the antiderivative of y cubed is 1 fourth y to the fourth. <coughs> this integral is also a little bit different because it's definite, so I'll tell you how to deal with that as well. Okay, so equals uv, so 1 fourth y to the fourth ln y minus integral v du, so minus a quarter y to the fourth times 1 over y dy. <clears throat> and so those bounds. So this first portion has no more integration, so you have to put the bounds there, 1 to e. The second one, put the bounds there. So just writing that a little bit more nicely so you can see it. Um, 1 fourth y to the fourth, natural log of y, 1 to e, minus 1 quarter, integral 1 to e, and then simplify that thing inside your integrand. y to the fourth times 1 over y is y cubed. Awesome. <clears throat> now we can evaluate this first part and then integrate that second part. So this will be 1 quarter e to the fourth ln of e. <clears throat> minus 1 quarter ln of 1, and then minus this antiderivative will be 1 16th y to the 4th from 1 to e. And that minus sign is a little bit tricky, so let's just put this in parentheses and we'll deal with the subtraction after we've worked out that integral. Remember, ln of e is a 1 and ln of 1 is 0, so this is e to the 4th over 4 minus... 1 16th e to the 4th minus a 16th. So that's e to the 4th over 4 minus a 16th. Well, well, e to the 4th over 16 plus a 16th because that negative distributes. And we can combine those first two terms. So get a common denominator for 4. And that's 3 e to the 4th over 16 plus a 16th. I would make you combine like terms, so there's one acceptable answer. Also, totally fine to say a 16th times e to the 4th plus 1, or 3e e to the 4th plus 1. <clears throat> or totally fine to say 3e e to the 4th plus 1 over 16. That's also fine. Yep, so two things there. The thing is that you have to not pick u to be the monomial, and the other thing is that you've got to know how to deal with the definiteness. Now I said in the beginning that usually this applies to, this technique applies to products, but sometimes there are not obvious products. And this is one of those examples. And I call these guys loners just because I find it's helpful to give stuff names. So we're gonna find the antiderivative of natural log of x. You know it's derivative, but not as antiderivative. Okay, so integral ln x dx. At this stage, you do not know what that is. So don't say 1 over x because it's wrong. You have to pick u to be ln because you can't pick it to be dv because you don't know how to integrate it. That's the whole point. So what else is left? If u is ln x, the only thing left in your integral to choose is dx. So dv is just 1 dx. And then du is 1 over x dx and v is x. So knowing that this is a thing you can do will definitely be on quizzes and exams and stuff like that. So, yeah, just FYI, hint, hint. uv minus integral v du. So uv is x ln of x minus integral v du. So x times 1 over x dx. Okay, lovely. So x ln x minus integral of 1 dx. Well, that's easy. The integral of 1 is just x. x ln x minus x plus c. That is the antiderivative of natural log of x. And this one, let's just check. Maybe you won't believe me, but how you would check, you'd say, well, I if I take the derivative of my answer, I should get back natural log. And the plus c doesn't matter, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Its derivative is 0. So this uses the product rule. So you get one natural log of x plus x times one over x 
that's the product rule on these first, this first term, and then minus 1. That's ln of x plus 1 minus 1, which is indeed natural log x. So yes, that is the antiderivative of ln of x. You don't have to have that memorized, but just you definitely should not say the antiderivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. That's real bad. All right, here's another loner. This one just happens to be definite. So integral from 0 to a half of inverse tangent of 2x. So once again, we don't know how to integrate inverse tangent, so we're going to let u be tan inverse of 2x, and dv will again be dx. So v is x, and du, well the derivative of inverse tan, if you remember the review lesson, is 1 over 1 plus 2x squared times 2 dx or 2 over 1 plus 4x squared dx. <laughs> okay, so we have uv x tan inverse of 2x. That part we're going to evaluate from 0 to a half. Minus the integral from 0 to a half of v du. So that will be multiplying v and du, we get 2x over 1 plus 4x squared dx. <coughs> okay, so let's plug stuff into that first bit. 1 half tan inverse of, well, that will be 1 minus 0 because you have that 0 term. <coughs> and tan inverse of 1 is actually pi quarters. The way you figure out tan inverse of 1 is you say tangent of what angle gives me 1 and technically, for various technical reasons, you'd be in the interval from negative pi halves to pi halves. That has to do with it being a function. It's more than I'm going to talk about now, but that's the question you answer. And the angle you plug into tangent to give you 1 is pi quarters. <coughs> so that's pi over 8, because pi quarters times a half. Okay, now the question is, what about the second integral? This is not a super, super duper easy one. This is one where you have to actually use substitution. And so here we're going to substitute the denominator. If you go back and look at your substitute notes from yesterday, the review notes, there, were, there was a problem just like this on there. And I've already used u and v, so I'm going to pick a different letter. And I'm going to think pick w, which will remind you of your childhood if you watched certain TV shows when you were a kid. w is 1 plus 4x squared. <clears throat> dw, what TV show is that, equals 8x dx. So dw over 8x equals dx. <clears throat> Let's change our bounds. If x is 0, w is plug in 0 to substitution. w is 1. And if x is a half, w is actually 2 because 1 half squared is a quarter. A quarter times 4 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have the integral from 1 to 2. 2x two over w times dw over 8x. <clears throat> so integral 1 to 2. Uh, 2 over 8 is a quarter. And then we'll just have 1 over w dw. <clears throat> okay, so that's pi over 8 minus a quarter natural log x value w. 1 to 2, pi over 8 minus a quarter natural log 2 minus 1 quarter natural log of 1. And remember that natural log of 1 is 0, so our final answer here is pi over 8 minus a quarter natural log of 2. So. Another example of a loner, another example of an integral with integration by parts that is definite. Notice that with the integration by parts step, so like this step, we didn't actually change the variable, so those bounds don't change. It's when you change the variable from x to some other letter, from another variable, that you have to change the bounds. All 
All right, two more tricky applications. This one is called the around the world, and you'll see why in a moment. So here, there's no obvious function that's gonna go away, as in e to the two x is derivative, stays e to the two x times some constant forever and ever and ever. And sine, you flip-flop from sine to cosine with some positives and some negatives in there, but it just does a lot of back and forthing. So, we'll try and integrate my parts. It's totally not obvious it's gonna work, but it does, and you'll see why in a second. It involves a clever trick. So, integral e to the two x sine x dx equals, and I'm just gonna tell you there's gonna be two iterations here, so I'm gonna go with number one. Okay. So I have a choice here. <clears throat> I can pick u to be e to the 2x, or I can pick dv to be e to the 2x. And whatever choice you choose, you'll get it right as long as you don't make any mistakes with arithmetic. So if I pick u to be e to the 2x, I get du is 2e to the 2x. If I pick dv to be that, I get a half e to the 2x. And the problem with this second choice is that you're gonna have fractions. And when you have fractions, you're more liable to make errors. So I am going to just not pick that one. I'll pick the first one, which means I have to let dv be sine x. <clears throat> and the antiderivative of sine is minus cosine. Okay, so it equals <clears throat> uv minus integral v du. <clears throat> so uv negative e to the 2x cosine x minus integral v du, so negative cosine x times 2 e to the 2x dx. And I'm gonna simplify there, negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 integral e to the 2x cosine x dx. And if you can do that in one step, by all means do so. I mean, it's totally easy to do. Just keep track of your signs and write down this second step and skip that first one. And you're like, well, okay, I guess they're gonna do it again. I mean, that will work. And when you do it again, make sure you pick the same sort of general strategy for your IBP as you did in the first go. So for example, here I picked the U to be the E. I'm gonna pick the U to be the E again. Otherwise this trick won't work. So U is E to the two X du once again is 2e to the 2x dx, dv is cosine x dx, and v is then sine. <clears throat> so minus e to the 2x cosine x just copies down, plus 2 times uv, so e to the 2x sine, minus integral v du, so 2e to the 2x sine x dx, and let's just distribute negative e to the 2x cosine x, 2 e to the 2x sine x, minus 4 integral e to the 2x sine x dx. <clears throat> and what you notice is that the thing inside the integrand, because you could do this again and again and again, forever and ever and ever, notice that this is the same as the thing you began with. And Here's the weirdness. You have this train of equalities. So that first thing equals this last thing. I'm going to introduce some notation. I'm going to say let i for integral equal this thing I want to find, e to the 2x sine x dx. I'm going to use that to rewrite this equal to that because we know that those two things are equal. So now what I have, <coughs> okay. Okay, so I have i equals negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 e to the 2x sine x minus 4i. And as weird as this is, you can add this integral to the original one, and you get 5 integrals equals negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 e to the 2x sine x. And then to get the integral by itself, the thing you want to find, you just divide by 5. So i 
is equal to, well, negative a fifth, e to the 2x cosine x, plus 2 fifths, e to the 2x sine x. And you do need the plus c, and these are the problems where it's easy to forget that, but that is your antiderivative. And that's the clever around the world trick where you integrate with integration parts and parts twice, and then you end up being able to manipulate or treat the integrand you're solving for like a variable. It's an unknown. And there it is. And you can check that by differentiation. It's right. Kind of crazy. But that's the around the world trick. It's, a tedi it's tedious. There's a lot of writing, but that's the trick. So when you write stuff on your um, written homework, make sure you just make it look nice. <coughs> And the last example of how this technique can be applied is sometimes when you do a clever substitution, you make the problem into integration by parts. And that's not totally obvious, and it's kind of a specific thing, but it, it works. And so here we have a root x inside of sine. And so I'm going to substitute that first, and because I know my integration by parts formula uses u's and v's, I'm going to use w. So w equals root x, which is x to the 1 half. Now dw is 1 half x to the negative half dx, or 1 over 2 root x dx. Or solving for dx, I've got 2 root x dw equals dx. So it's not obvious why that's helpful, but you'll see in a moment sine of root x dx equals integral. Okay, that'll be sine of u w times 2 root x dw. As we discussed substitution in the last lesson, you have to have only w's. You can't have x's, but root x is w. So this can become 2 integral w sine w dw. And that is the most basic, most baby integration by parts problem I can give you, w times sine w. It's a basic product, it's one iteration, it's easy. So pick u, pick dv. u is w. du is then dw. dv is sine of w. v is then negative cosine of w. <clears throat> and this will equal two times uv minus w cosine w minus v du, so actually plus because of the negative, plus integral cos w dw. So that's negative 2w cosine w plus 2 sine w plus c. And then re-input your substitution, negative 2 root x cosine of root x plus 2 sine of root x plus c. And that is a rather clever trick, and at least in WebAssign it will tell you to use substitution and then integration by parts. On your written homework you've got to pick up that this is the trick to apply. And the same thing will be true on a test or a quiz. All right, those are, it's a comprehensive list of all the ways integrated parts can be done. So by now you should try the next three problems and then check your answers against the solutions that are posted in Blackboard.